Our presenter is Susan J. Sullivan, and I'm just so envious of that beautiful picture there. Uh, she is in uh, lovely Aspen, Colorado, and uh, she's been managing electronic records since 1982. She has a fantastic track record with uh, NARA in D.C., uh, working on electronic records policies. Uh, for seven years, uh, and she also was awarded AIMS Distinguished Service Award for her contributions to the PDFA standard. Uh, you're all familiar with PDF, I know, and A is the archival uh, version of that, and uh, AIM was a leader in getting that through uh, ISO, and Susan was uh, very much uh, involved in that, uh, so much so that she received an AIM award for her work. Uh, she also led something that you probably have heard about in your classes, uh, the federal government uh, using what they're calling a capstone email management um, program. Where, that's not the topic of the conversation here, but I just wanted you to know that Susan also led uh, the charge when that was being developed. Uh, now, though, she's the Enterprise Content Management System Manager at Pitkin County in Aspen, Colorado, and she's uh, interested in transparent information management. Uh, her presentation tonight is uh, of interest to me personally, and, and I know to all of you, uh, it's managing records uh, with Google Apps. If you have records in Google Apps, what do you do about managing them uh, in a uh, wise manner? <laughs> Uh, there are very tools, uh, very few tools available uh, to allow you to do this and still be compliant with all of the regulations that uh, govern management of records. So uh, this presentation is going to explain why organizations use uh, Gmail, Google Vault, Google Drive, and other uh, Google apps. And it will describe the record keeping challenges, explore solutions for managing business records, and uh, even uh, explore proven and potential policies and technical solutions uh, for managing records that are created, received, and maintained in Google Apps. So uh, I am uh, eager to hear the presentation, uh, but first, uh, Susan wanted me to ask you, how many of you use Gmail or any other Google app? Uh, this is the poll question, so uh, select a yes or a no, and uh, then we'll see what the answers are. I'm seeing a lot of answers going in there, and uh, almost all of them are uh, yeses so far. Okay. Uh, and so what I'm going to do now uh, is just uh, take a look at this, <laughs> although we can see it very quickly. Uh, our responses so far, 12 out of 16 said, uh, yes, 13 now we're up to. So uh, I am, uh, with that little piece of information <laughs> for Susan to work with, I'm going to move off this slide and I'm going to hand the mic over to Susan and uh, learn from her. Susan, go ahead. Good evening, everybody. I hope you can hear me. If you can't hear me, just type in chat and I'll try to make some kind of adjustments. Um, I'm really honored to have been asked by Pat to uh, present this session. Um, I can see from the poll that we have a lot of Google users, so hopefully you'll understand some of the points I'm making. Um, the session will cover, from a record-keeping perspective, the benefits, challenges, and solutions of using Google Apps. And I'll give you a little history also about our new IT department, how it evolved, and that will help put my story in context. The session should help you in addressing and understanding record-keeping challenges introduced by cloud technologies such as Google and how to solve them. Um, I need to tell you I'm on a quest. My goal is to find and implement practical solutions to managing automatically records behind the scenes. I've been in records in IT for, let's see, I quit counting at 30 years. <laughs> I've learned that people generally don't manage records manually, and I'm really tired of beating people over the head and trying to get them to file their records and organize their records appropriately. So after spending 12 years at the National Archives, I decided to bag my federal government job and I moved to a small county in Colorado, figuring that in Colorado in a small county, I could actually realize my dream. Um, the skiing had nothing to do with it. By the way, that shadow on the bottom left of the photo that you're looking at is me. <laughs> it was taken at about 9.30 on a Friday morning. 
just for context. So um, getting ready to move on, um, one more pretty picture for you. Um, I'm juggling two screens here. <laughs> so um, Pitkin County is on the western slope of Colorado. Um, it has about uh, 18,000 people population. Um, and the county government has about 325 employees, about 20 of which are driving snow plows or working on trails. So they don't have computers, lucky for me. Um, and as I said, this is the end of the beautiful pictures. Um, I was very happy to find when I came here, um, besides just beautiful winters, summer and fall are absolutely gorgeous. So if you look at that picture on the upper left, those are trees. The gold, the gold that you see are aspen trees. Um, and, and the green um, areas that you see there are where the trees haven't changed yet because the mountains are creating a shadow on that area of the mountain. So, I mean, this place is just unbelievable. Um, so just a little plug there for, for Aspen, Pitkin County. You can't, this is paradise. It's not records management paradise, though, <laughs> unfortunately, but I'm, I'm aiming to make it that way. So um, for many years, the city of Aspen managed um, IT for Pitkin County, and basically they provided uh, infrastructure, you know, connectivity, hardware, software, help desk, but they didn't really provide system support. Every department had its own IT budget, and when that department needed a system, they went out and they bought it. So as a result, we're, we're in a situation where our systems don't talk to each other. The same information is entered differently by various departments. For example, addresses are different. You know, in, in counties, you've got uh, people, places, and transactions, pretty much. Um, and all those things need to be consistent. We're, we're really not there yet. So um, we had users that didn't have good training. They really don't know what the system's full potential is. Um, the processes are very paper oriented. And there is no standardization in hardware. Everybody's got a different kind of laptop with different software on it. So it, it's uh, a little bit of a, an interesting um, challenge from an IT perspective. So um, our department's name is Business Information and Technology Services, which I love because business information is first and, and records information is first. And I was actually one of the first employees hired, which tells me that the chief technical officer understands that information is very important. So I've got that upper management support that you hear is so important in a records management position. And of course, we have the technology, which is the hardware software network, and we're trying to be a cloud-based environment because um, we want to minimize the cost of maintaining an infrastructure here at the county. And then services, services are our main game. We're here to support, manage, help, transition these users from a situation where they were kind of on their own to facilitating, doing business process analysis, really helping them. And the users have very much embraced this. In fact, we got 67 calls on our help desk yesterday. So they know we're here, they're reaching out, and um, they're accessing um, BITS services. So basically, we're under the gun to, de to deliver value over the old model where we were paying the city of Aspen to take care of our IT. Um, we're under the gun to save money. Of course, you know, the sooner the better. Um, of course, we need to support new technologies and mobility. That's why we're, we're doing a cloud first kind of a, a structure. And uh, we need to reduce paper. You know, I always joke that, uh, the bottom line of records management is you can do all kind of great things with technology, 
that people just really want that paper out of their offices. And we're looking at remodeling our county building, and that's becoming a very high priority. Get rid of my paper for me. It's the last thing I want to do, because I'm on a quest, if you remember. Um, of course, uh, we want to manage our content better. We want to have an enterprise content management, information governance, whatever you want to call it, I don't care anymore. The name of my profession has changed at least six times in the 30 or so years that I've been doing this work. It's really just getting control over your information, knowing what you have, getting the junk out of the way, and, and preserving what's permanent for posterity and for the researchers of the future. Um, open government is very important because we want to share with our constituents. Our constituents are very invested in the community. We're a small community, and the people here are, are very interested in what's going on. We're very uh, environmentally conscious, and everybody's kind of interested in Aspen and Pitkin County keeping its character and being a place where people want to come from all over the world, and when they come here, they have a great time, they have a great experience, they see beautiful things, they eat great food in our restaurants, our streets are beautiful. You can just imagine the whole, the whole objective here is to keep Aspen cool, not weird like Austin. And anyway, uh, and then we need to break down the stovepipes because with the departmental um, view, and, and the departments really have unique business functions. Um, they tend to be little entities in and of themselves, but what they don't realize is how they actually can connect from a data perspective. So we're trying, we want to develop a big data map and an enterprise architecture and hook the systems together so they work together. And um, as part of all of this, um, we we had uh, the last couple of years. We've had a lot of uh, great strides in doing this. So here's just a little timeline of what's occurred and what's occurring in the past like three years. Um, and between 2012 and 2013, um, the county identified the fact that they wanted to have their own IT department. They hired the chief technology officer and they identified goals, they allocated budget, and one of the first things our CTO did was they converted and migrated their email from Outlook to Google Mail. Um, as part of that, they implemented Google and they started training and webinars. Um, before I was even hired, I came to work here in April, April 7th of last year. Um, I came here to meet two very nice gentlemen from a company called iMerge that were doing an assessment of our record keeping program. And I spent the first week following them around. <laughs> we um, made great friends. We had a wonderful time. We learned a lot and we made some really good assessments of what was going on here in the county. And when they left, we had a pretty good picture of what was going on. Um, by 2014, um, you know, this is this is when I came into to the county. Um, our 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 iMerge team developed the ECM findings. None of them were a surprise. It was all pretty standard stuff. Um, pretty much the, the same condition just about every government agency or organization is in. Um, and uh, so we continued to move on. As a records manager, I got very much sucked into a lot of the IT, uh, IT work, which was fine because it's the best way to get records management embedded into the whole program. And a lot of the uh, IT guys are now um, ministers of records management, if you want to call them that. Um, so um, we continue to implement Google Drive and Google Apps. We also had... Um, gentleman from eDiscovery Squad came in and configured the Google Vault for us and uh, turned it on so we could start uh, capturing our email. Um, by default, we turned it on to capture everybody's email. We'll talk more about Google Vault later. Um, we started a blog to, to increase awareness and get out the message. Um, 
we hired a contractor and we migrated all of the data from the city of Aspen to our own network. So we had them come in, they, they bought the hardware, they configured the network, they um, created all the connections, and they began managing our network, including the help desk. We established our organization, became formally BITS, and as I said, we transitioned the help desk. Um, this year, we actually started our own website because previously, Aspen and Pickin had one website. So we broke off from them and we created our own website. Um, we needed to deal with email encryption because we have a health and human services organization that um, has uh, HIPAA compliant information. And uh, so we use a, a, a tool called Vertru for that. Um, we're also working on a GIS portal so that our GIS data, is, that's geographic data, is available online without people coming to, to see us and request information. They can download data. It's a very open and um, interesting portal that we're working on. Um, and you can imagine being in Pekin County with all the mountains and streams and canyons that uh, there's a lot of GIS data needed when people want to build things. Um, we have a lot of rules about, uh, you know, open areas and trails and encroachments on, on those kinds of things. We have a lot of uh, federal land and county land, and uh, our GIS information is very important. And to me, I see the GIS information as kind of the key, the centerpiece of our data, because we can link just about everything to GIS location. So uh, we're going to look into to doing that. Um, with, with the new website, we had to archive our old website. So we uh, had a contract with uh, the Internet Archive of a system and a group called Archive It, and we archived our old website. We also identified uh, social media. We have a lot of web uh, Facebook pages. We have a YouTube channel. Uh, social media just seemed to be popping up everywhere. Uh, we contracted with uh, Archive Social to capture that social media. We also have um, a lot of inefficiencies with routing documents around for signature. So we're implementing electronic signatures. We're doing a pilot now using EchoSign from Adobe. The reason why we picked EchoSign was it allows you to load uh, Google Drive documents in, into their application for routing for digital signature. And it also is a really nice interface for PDF files as well. Um, we started to, we, we got a schedule approved, which I will, we will share with you later, for managing email. And we're working on managing our loose data, which is the stuff in the shared drives, which is a huge giant mess, including the stuff that's in Google Drive, another huge giant mess. Um, we've hired three business process analysts to come and help our customers analyze their business processes and integrate systems that actually have the potential to work together. So I think for you know a short period of time, this this small team, it's like 12 people now, um, has really accomplished a lot. And I gotta say, the greatest thing about my team is we're not competitive, we're very supportive, no one's trying to look good, look better than anybody else. It's just a very, very nice, cohesive team with the right skill set to get this stuff done. That said, so now I've kind of painted the picture, and uh, this is what I've discovered as I've uh, as I've started using Google here. I also used Google at the National Archives, and we did a big migration there. And uh, at both locations, um, some of the benefits that I saw in Google Mail that that gets people, organizations interested in buying it, using it, is that you know it's um, cheap and there's no IT infrastructure. It's in the cloud. It's um, available, uh, you know, on mobile devices. You can get your mail, your calendar, your contacts. You can do chats from your mobile device. Um, you can save attachments directly to Google Drive. You don't have to save them on the share drive. 
um, there, what you see on the screen here is the result of the ability to label and filter your email. And this is something that we, we did at the National Archives and we did a lot of classes on it. You can actually, um, you can categorize your emails with tags, you can color code your tags, you can set up filters to, um, based, on, based on an example email and you can automatically filter your email. Um, the goal is to have uh, your inbox kind of look like this where everything is kind of tagged and those tags appear in the interface as, as the equivalent of folders. Um, you've got your calendar, which you can share and access from anywhere, and then there's the chat, which, which are a nice way to get someone's attention and, and talk to someone without writing an email and sending it. And uh, so basically, you know, people really like Google Mail once they start using it. Of course, as with other uh, Google applications, there are some user adoption problems. For those of us that have used, for example, um, WordPerfect way back when, there was a big transition when we went to Word. And then later on, Word changed. I think it was from five to six or at some point. And, and we had to deal with those changes. And these are changes that people tend to resist. So um, what, we're, what we're facing here from a customer service perspective is the issue with um, user adoption with not only Gmail, but some of the other um, parts of, of Google Apps. So moving on to the Google Mail challenges uh, from a record keeping perspective. Um, I have a, some little bits of screenshots here to show you. First of all, there's the keep everything mental mentality. And what you see there is the, the nemesis of records managers. It's that archive button. And what it does is you click on that and it moves the, the email out of your inbox and it sends it somewhere, but it's still there. Um, and you can go into your chat and you can turn, click off record and those chats become non-records or they don't get captured as records because they're not available and, and they're not, you know, they're off record. Now, we don't know if the, the interactions that are happening are records or not, but the, the system allows you to take your ch chats off record. And like I mentioned before, you've got the training issues with labels and filters. Some people just don't want to take the time to organize their email. We know that. Um, what we've discovered that the interface changes without notice. So you can create a lot of great training documentation. How to, how to use your Gmail, and how to do labels and filters, and, and Google will change the interface, and now your documentation is out of date, and you're getting calls from your users because they don't know how to, to manage in, in the new interface. And uh, some people really resist change. Um, a big issue that we have to deal with as records managers is um, if, if you read the federal regulations, the federal regulations define an email uh, and attachments together are the record, including um, the addresses, the full names, the full identifiable names of the um, senders and recipients are required to be a full record, all the metadata behind that. Uh, and the attachments are an integral part of the email. Well, Google Mail allows you to link to content in Google Drive as opposed to attaching that to the email. That content that's linked does not get saved as part of the email. And that presents issues for records managers because we don't have the full record. We have a link. If you don't have the content that's linked, you don't. Ha you may not have the full record. Um, obviously, encryption is a requirement. Um, some people think that the the Google encryption, you know, in in transit or in storage is enough. Our our um, customers in our Health and Human Services Department were not satisfied with that, so we had to deal with encryption. So we have Virtue 
uh, Virtue sends a message to the recipient saying your content is encrypted in Virtue. Um, that content stays encrypted and is not available for retention as a record. So we had to come up with a policy for email, encrypted email. And the policy that we came up with was, you know, go ahead and leave that information in an encrypted state unless that information is for its retention period, leave it encrypted for its retention period, unless it is requested for uh, an e-discovery or open records request, or the user that has access to that encrypted email is leaving the county or changing jobs. In that case, they will have to, you know, do the old-fashioned thing, decrypt the email, save it, store it in a, a protected environment, notify your supervisor or someone, you know, where that information is, um, or keep it in a record-keeping system where it's secured and uh, access to that information is controlled. Um, this was a policy we had to make on the fly. This happens a lot with records management. A new technology gets selected, and you have to deal with the record-keeping issues, and sometimes you just have to scramble. So another issue we came up with in Gmail was when uh, someone leaves the county, uh, you know, typically they'll contact IT and they'll say, okay, you can delete this person's account. Well, you can't delete that person's account. That person, you delete that person's account, all the information and content goes away. So we had to take, um, take measures to uh, work with our IT staff, decide how to keep that email um, and other content in Google Apps. Um, we, can, we actually have, uh, we suspend the account and uh, we retain the account for now, but you still have to pay for that license. So we're, we're looking into ways to manage that. Um, you, can, you can keep that information in Vault if you want to but you have to make arrangements, licensing arrangements for that. So, solutions. So, the solution for us was a record schedule. Um, and we're putting technology behind it to implement that record schedule. One of the biggest issues was not a Google issue, it was more like a, a legal issue. So, we have laws in Colorado the first law is like the um, the art from the state archives, and it that law defines uh, email as as not a record unless it's declared a record. Now we know that no one evaluates all their emails as records, so I'm not sure that that law is truly implementable. The law that everybody pays attention to is the the law for. Uh, open records or e-discovery that says all stored information, including email, is subject to the Colorado Open Records Act or legal request and is considered a public record. So you've got a public record, you've got an archival record. Um, and, and it's interesting because people here and people everywhere tend to use the definition that suits them very well. And we know that Hillary Clinton did that, did that and, and stands behind her definition of a record. So in this case, we had to decide for managing email and having implemented Capstone at the National Archives, um, I saw that there were some issues with Capstone and I wanted to try to solve them here. So I, I asked myself and I asked my users, what do you want? First of all, I don't want to worry about managing their email. They want to keep their email, but you will have a copy of this record schedule filled out, and, and that's the handout you'll get at the end. Um, they don't want to worry about managing their email, and they want to keep their important email for as long as they need it. They want to be able to delete the junk or, or things from their bank or messages from their doctors. And, some people want to identify the email of long-term enduring value, which I think is a very small amount. 
and, and sometimes we want to organize what we keep. So how do we meet these requirements? Well, what I have gotten approved at the Colorado, uh, by the Colorado State Archivists is an email retention schedule that, that basically by default says all mail is con email is considered routine. And this is based upon uh, correspondence and general documentation schedule in the state of Colorado that says, you know, routine information is, you know, correspondence information that is basically routine. So by default, all information in email, in email is considered routine, which means, and this is the way we implemented this, you can delete it after two years out of your mailbox or you can keep it. Whatever you keep, the county will delete it two years after you leave. So that allows the users to keep what they want for as long as they need it. And they, it allows them to dispose of email that has reached its uh, expiration date or its routine, its expiration date after two years. The other thing is, is you can delete non-record or junk email whenever you want. What we do behind the scenes is we retain that deleted email for six months and we're developing systems right now to monitor that email for, for erroneously deleted records. The only exception to this rule is um, we, we're, we're leaving out the county attorney's office due to attorney client privilege. They want to be able to manage their own records and in their own manual way, and, and we approve that. And our record schedule shows that. So users can then use the Gmail labeling to label their permanent records for archives. And then the county, after monitoring the deletions and allows deletions, we retain an audit log of all deleted emails for seven years. So what we're doing here is we're covering ourselves for what gets deleted, and that's even expired records. So we cover ourselves by keeping that log, and we have a complete list of whatever we've deleted, and we keep that for seven years. So, um, and of course, we always have the, the old fashioned manual management provision, which says that when emails are part of a case file, such as related to a contract, or a project, um, users are instructed to save that email to PDF and retain it with related records so that that email, man, email can be part of the file. And in that case, the email then inherits the retention time of that case file. Um, one important thing that uh, we have, we are, trying to convey to our users, particularly our senior executives and our elected officials. Um, we email, we automate this in our, you know, Pitkin County account. If people use a different account, we instruct them to forward their email to their Pitkin County account so that it may be managed as a record. So that's in a nutshell what the schedule says and how we intend to implement it. Um, and we will, um, and you can take a look at that schedule later. I'm glad that Pat's excited about it. I think I'm going to have to, I'm going to get some criticisms and it's going to be kind of interesting to see how all this plays out. Um, so going to Google Vault. Google Vault has some clear benefits. It's a great way to capture all uh, Gmail and Drive content in one repository. This is kind of an interesting concept to me, and it always has been, because what you have in uh, Google Apps is one repository, and you have different windows and, and ways to look at that content. Google Vault is just one other way to look at that content. It's not a separate repository, although deleted emails will not show in a user's email box but it will, they will be visible and searchable in Google Vault. Um, it's easy to set up. It provides centralized access for authorized users. 
users. Um, here, I think uh, there's only two people who have access to Google Vault because there's a lot of sensitive information in there. And it can save everything, including deleted email. So Google Vault's a nice thing to have running on the back end, and we know that Google's working on it, and we hope that it'll have more functionality. Um, it, you can actually um, include retention schedules in there if you, if you are willing to work with uh, Google APIs and extend Vault a little bit. So the challenges with Google Vault are, okay, so what's the policy? So we turned on Google Vault and we didn't have a policy. We, we haven't really told our users that we're saving everything. We have an acceptable use policy that says there is no presumption of privacy when you use your pickandcounty.com email address or Google Drive, and um, we can pretty much do anything we want with it. That said, users kind of freak out when they find out we're keeping all their stuff. Um, their soul is in their email. They take it very personally. Um, so that's kind of an issue with Google Vault when people find out that what Google Vault does. Um, if something is deleted from Vault, it's deleted for good. Um, the thing, an issue we found with Google Vault is um, is shown by the screen. Um, when you do a search and you export your results, you get uh, four different downloads. None of these downloads I can use. Um, there, there, there's a format called MBOX, which is a, a format that is output by Google Vault. And XML is also a way that the Vault exports the data. Um, when you export the data, the attachments are separated from the email. So if you need to produce those as a unified record, you have to put them together somehow. Um, the search is, is somewhat limited. You have to understand their search terms and labels. It's, le it's less than intuitive. And uh, you really need to extend Google Vault to really use it to support uh, open records and e-discovery. You can browse through records and look for things, but um, it's difficult to actually, um, you know, one would think you can search things, you can export things, you can find these emails, and they look like they did in Gmail, and you can put them in PDF, and you can box them up, and you can send them to your requester, and you're good to go. That's not how it works. Um, so, as I mentioned before, you, know, you also have to uh, suspend your account but when people leave, but you have to still pay for it. So those are some challenges that we ran into with Google Vault. Now for solutions, we're working on solutions to extend the Vault with using uh, Google APIs, which are um, programming languages that actually lets you plug into Google and work with their with their um, with their infrastructure from the back end. And um, what we're what we're working on is exporting emails and attachments with one unified PDF file. Um, we are making great strides in doing that. We're almost there. The next thing we want, we're going to do is we're going to tag and we're going to monitor that deleted email because there is a tag within Google Vault when an email is deleted that we can act on. Um, we implemented the default retention policy so that we don't have to write complex rules to manage email by their content. Um, we're, going, we're configuring Vault to act on labels such as permanent. And in our record schedule, you will see that we allowed ourselves um, kind of like carte blanche to go in and and review these emails, use auto categorization, whatever we need to do. Um, if, uh, if you know about Capstone, Capstone uh, identifies senior executives as default 
permanent email records, as having default permanent email records. I did a um, proof of concept prior to Capstone where we had senior executives managing emails in a, like a mirror system, and what we found out was these senior executives don't have any more permanent email than anybody else. Don't tell the National Archives I said that. They might be listening. <laughs> but, uh, and the difficulty with Capstone is keeping track of who those senior officials are and, and maintaining your system so that it captures all those email messages as permanent. It's a very manual process, and uh, the National Archives recently issued a, a draft general record schedule for Capstone, and they actually introduced a process where agencies are, are to identify their senior officials that are permanent records, email records by default. They are to submit that form to the National Archives, and the Archives approves that list. Well, by the time that list gets back to the agency, those positions are going to change. The senior executives' position names change, the organizations change, it's a very dynamic thing. So that's why we went with the, the routine, everything's routine by default, and we can go in there and if we see that our, our county managers' email tend to be permanent based on our criteria, uh, we can recategorize all those as permanent. We can do that manually. Um, we can do that using our search tools. But we have the ability to, to recategorize those as permanent. Likely, on the, on the converse, we can take email messages that users may have categorized as permanent because they think they're so important and change those back to routine. So that gives us a little bit of wiggle room there for the default policies and, and gives us the people who understand what a permanent record is and what a routine record is, the capability to recategorize. And then, of course, we will archive the accounts when employees leave and we'll start um, monitoring the um, retention times on those and deleting records that have reached their expiration date. Now we're going to drive. Google Drive benefits. Well, we're always telling everybody to, to use Google Drive because we're going to Google Drive. And uh, Google Drive is pretty good. It's got the great sharing, file sharing and collaboration um, capabilities. There's no need to keep hitting the save button. It saves your document as you work. If you, if you go back and forth from Google Docs to Microsoft Word, you might be in trouble because you might forget to save those Word documents. It's happened. It's happened to me. Um, you can get to your documents anywhere that you have online access to, to share, uh, edit, and, and access that document. You can get to your content on a mobile device. You can share something uh, real time. We sit in our meetings, our staff meetings, and uh, you can see people uh, getting on the agenda and, and editing their content right there. We've got half of the staff is, is on the same document at the same time editing con content. And sometimes we even make snide remarks to each other. It's kind of fun. Um, you've got free storage, and you can add free storage if you need to. Well, you got to pay to add the storage. Um, but that actually eliminates the need for hard drives, so you can use Chromebooks and you don't need to have a, a full-blown PC, for example. Um, you don't need to have the MS Office licenses and the capability to deal with the MS Office uh, files is, is getting better every day. Um, your data is encrypted in transit and at rest. Um, you've got version control. You've, you've got uh, You've got your uh, file uh, history and all your changes are captured automatically. You can extend your applications in Google Drive by going to the, the Google, um, the Google add-on locations, I guess it's called a store, um, and many of those are free. For people that like to have um, their data in uh, Windows Explorer, they can sync to their workstation, they can synchronize their drive to their workstation or their device. Um, it's got a very powerful search, 
so you don't need to really organize things in folders. Um, and if you have an MS Office uh, document, you can convert it to a Google Doc, and you'll have that Office version available to you because Drive d retains the original file as part of that conversion. So those are the those are the things that we sell people on in Google Drive to get them to use it. But there are challenges, like with everything else. One of the things is that uh, Google Drive is really managed at the account level, so it's a lot like email. Um, users have, you know, it's not like on a shared drive where there's a folder and several people can get to it. It's controlled by the user. Um, and from a records management perspective, uh, Google Drive files have different file properties than the file properties you'll find in Windows. So, you know, clean up and your, your standard uh, ways of looking at files and sorting files are different in Drive. Um, there are limited um, solutions for managing data in Google Drive. You'll, you can go to any uh, records management application vendor and ask them, do they manage information in Google Drive, and they'll tell you yes. What they mean is that they will export the data into their repository. We are looking to manage the Google Drive data in Google Drive. That's why we went to the cloud. Thank you very much. Um, we find that sometimes uh, Google Drive can duplicate what's on the network shares. You've got people working in the network shares. You've got people working in Google Drive. So now you've got data everywhere in two different places, managed in two different ways in completely different formats. You've got a learning curve. There's a lot of people who don't understand how to use Google Drive. I myself do extra clicks because sometimes I just think in a Microsoft way. It's just the way I was brought up, so to speak. So user adoption is an issue. Um, unless you buy extra software, you're not going to have any real backups. We've had people lose entire folders of documents in Google Drive because they had to, um, there's no real backups. Now, there are ways to go into the back end and, and restore things, but you got to go to administrator, and it's not an easy process. Again, you are, you are um, dependent on the bandwidth. Oftentimes, we see people making sharing mistakes. Um, they'll share something out publicly that wasn't supposed to go publicly. Um, they'll share information with their manager that's draft and shouldn't be seen by their manager yet because they don't understand intuitively how the sharing works. And, and those of you who have used Google Drive probably understand. Um, the change history. Yeah, you have great change history for Google Docs, but for your MS Office files, not really because Google Drive isn't configured to manage the change history of uh, Microsoft Office files. Because of those different file properties, it's not easy to clean up. It's kind of hard to see everything that's in there. You can't, you know, look at it at a glance like you would expect. And we um, don't control uh, what our users do as far as um, third-party applications go. So you might have people using a workflow engine that uh, is not part of the standard configuration of the county. Um, it's very open, very creative, and that can cause record keeping issues as well because you have different kinds of records and, and it may also be a preservation issue. So solutions. Um, one solution that we are testing right now is called AODocs. And AODocs works kind of on top of Drive. It, um, it is a centralized management solution. So when um, information from Drive is, is committed by the user or by an administrator to AODocs, it becomes managed by AODocs. AODocs becomes the owner of, of that content, usually entire folders. It's got its own security and administration module, so you create Google groups and you can manage libraries and folders by groups. So it, it 
takes away that challenge of, you know, everything being in a user's account. We've had users um, leave, the, leave the county that had important documents that weren't sh were shared with other people. Their account was suspended or for whatever reason, people lost access to those documents. Um, so AODocs helps solve that problem by centralizing the control of these files and actually creating an enterprise location for your Google information. It's got a full audit log that tells you, you know, what everybody did. It's got more uh, robust version control on your documents. It allows you to add document properties and metadata. So if you want to mirror your um, Microsoft uh, Explorer type metadata, you can do that. It's got advanced search and also has a workflow capability. So you can integrate workflow as you um, engineer your business processes. Um, let's see what else I have here. All your documents stay in Google Drive. AODocs sits on top of Google Drive, helps you manage and um, work with your documents. It kind of uh, takes care of the issues that our users have identified um, because they're used to the shared drives. They, they like that, sh that enterprise shared um, kind of way of doing things. So um, AnoDocs kind of mirrors that uh, enterprise file server and it protects against uh, accidental data loss. It improves document security. It works with a very, it works with the Google Drive interface and they have their own interface too that you can use. You can access your documents from the AODocs interface or you can do it, use them from Google Drive. Like I said, Google Drive is the repository, AODocs is another viewer and, and management tool. Um, security, their, their security platform has been well thought out and you can provide access to various groups and you can lock down documents. Um, the workflow allows you to uh, march a document through its life cycle and have it end up in a folder that has rules attached to it that implements a record schedule. So um, we have a lot of interest in uh, the AODocs. It has two uh, modules to it. One is um, uh, the like the file server, which works like a typical file server, and the other one is the document management piece, which includes the workflow, adding metadata, all that kind of capability. Um, you can look up AODocs online. They have a lot of good uh, references. And um, so um, just we're, we're just starting to work with it. We have access to it. We're configuring it. We're running a pilot on it. Just real quickly, so that's all the benefits and challenges of the Google Apps. The other initiatives that we're working on is uh, we're doing our intranet and Google Sites. Um, we are uh, obviously, I talked about the inter internet archives and the archive social. Um, we're developing policy and, um, and I have inherited the policy, the policy leadership role, which I think is a good leader, a role for a records manager. And we're looking to scan all of the paper that we have sitting around the offices and we hope to get that paper and store that paper securely in uh, Google Drive through AODocs. Um, so just in summary before our questions, um, we obviously have benefits, challenges, and solutions, but the cloud is like the cloud. It's like the weather. It's ever changing and you can't predict it. Um, we're looking into moving to Google for work versus Google for government because we've found that Google for Gov government has some limitations due to all the stringent security standards and uh, we think we can get more functionality out of Google for work. User adoption is an issue and we are continuously proving our concepts and trying to meet our challenges and uh, our updates are ongoing. This is uh, this. Uh, Briefing is kind of a, a evolving story, and uh, hopefully I can come back and talk to you in another year about 
what happened with all of our initiatives and where we are with uh, managing this information in Google Apps. Uh, that said, um, I will now entertain questions. Well, thank you very much. And uh, do you have any questions? I'm going to uh, field them for our presenter. Uh, if you do, just raise your hand and I will call on you. And if anybody has any they'd like to put into the uh, chat area, do that as well. Hi, thank you. Um, I I'm wondering, you talked about, you know, it's a difficult for users to adopt Google Drive sometimes, which is what I was finding at my workplace. And I'm wondering if you have suggestions for, or I guess a naming convention, because what we're finding is that you can upload documents to the drive that are Word and all these different formats, and it saves a Word format and a Google format, and then you have lots of formats floating around. Do you have any tips or suggestions for how to get users to not do that? We haven't addressed Do that at all. Um, okay. But um, we have worked with our um, our facility staff is 100% Google Drive, and we have worked with them to help them organize their folders and name their documents. You can find there's a lot of tips and techniques online for doing that. It depends on what your business needs are and what your users can work with. Sometimes it's not a good idea to rename a file because you lose your um, you lose your provenance. But um, you know it depends. Okay, thank you. All right, we hear that uh, Google just announced Microsoft Office compatibility, but I, I have to see that first. And then AODocs has a plugin for uh, Microsoft Office documents as well. All right, and thank you very much.